although you haven't been to the Saturn system, Cassini has, and you talk about when we went and we turned around and we, and we, and we, we orbited this and we did that, you must have felt you were actually there. Always. Is that right? Always. I feel like I lived my life in the outer solar system. And how long so were you? much so that I had a hard time keeping up with what goes on down here. Yes, just as well, I think. <laughs> just as well. <laughs> so how, how long were you exploring the Saturn system? Well, okay, we were there for 13 years. But frankly, the, the mission got started in November of 1990. So basically, three decades of like, being committed to this. And how long did it take to get there? It took uh, seven years of travel, but it yeah. took us seven years to design and build the spacecraft yes. and the instruments yeah. and launch it. Seven years to design and build, seven years to get there, and then once you were there, how long were you actually exploring? 13, 13 years. And, so, and you could take a decision, I think we might go and look at so-and-so now. Let, let's go and visit Enceladus, shall we, now? Or, well, or? We, we, planned, we planned the whole trajectory years in advance. Okay. I mean, like our nominal mission was four years, and um, we did that, we started planning that soon after launch. I mean, that's quite a job because we planned like every, I forget, so don't quote me on this, but every five minute interval in four years had to be planned. What are we gonna be doing? Which instrument's gonna be prime? What data are we gonna collect? How are we gonna turn the spacecraft? Uh, but could you so decide at some point, let's go back and have a look at so-and-so? Okay, so the reason why we could do that, I mean, to a singular degree with Cassini was because uh, we were in orbit. It wasn't like the Voyager mission, which I was also on in the 1980s, where we flew through the giant planet systems of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We spent about a week in close proximity, gathering as much information as we could in a hurry, and, uh, and then that was it. It was off to the next one. You know, years, it took us years in between. Uh, with Cassini, we were in orbit around Saturn, so we had the leisure of finding something like the plume on Enceladus and deciding, okay, this is so exciting, we gotta really come back and take another look. And thankfully, we were given mission extensions. The mission was supposed to be only four years long, and then we kept getting extended, obviously, for another, whatever that was, nine years. And, um, and it was in the extended mission that we really honed in on Enceladus and had lots and lots of flybys of it, even flew through its plume, grabbed up material to sample, and so on. What so, was it like when you first saw these plumes? It must have been an incredibly exciting experience. Uh, it was. It was, um, it was at first puzzling. We had to be absolutely sure were we seeing it or not, because our first pictures weren't like the best. But when we finally got up close, we knew oh, we need to go get closer and take a closer look. Um, we, had, we took a picture where you see just dozens of these narrow, discrete jets erupting from the surface. How and, high do and, they go? Oh, well, as discrete jets, they probably go about, I don't know, uh, 50, 100, 200 kilometers, but they feed a plume. No, that's, no, 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 no. They, f they feed a plume that goes tens of thousands of kilometers and ends up supplying uh, particles that make, in cell, uh, make Saturn's E-ring. So this big, diffuse ring of material that Enceladus sits in is created by the spray that's coming off the surface. 